Every three or four years, there will be a trigger. It might be hearing a tune from the soundtrack or watching an old video recommended on my YouTube homepage. But whatever it may be, I'll get that irresistible itch again to replay the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Yet, as the years have passed and Skyrim's 10th anniversary has been and gone, I found myself less and less able to scratch that itch. Last week, I started a new game as committed and eager as I've ever been to save Tamriel from Alduin. Yet, in spite of my enthusiasm, playing the game felt like a chore after only 20 minutes. Skyrim has, in spite of its almost comical number of re-releases, aged considerably. But perhaps more importantly, so have I. I was 11 when Skyrim was released in November 2011. At that age, Skyrim suited me perfectly because it allowed me to tell my own story. Instead of playing with physical toys, I invested my overactive imagination into Skyrim. I lived and breathed the game, and I continued to do so as I entered my teenage years. In fact, it was when I was 16 that I created this YouTube channel and started to produce videos about the lore of the game. As a young teenager, Skyrim seemed to me like a truly open world where I could set my imagination free. Yet in my most recent attempt to play the game, after I escaped Halgen and was faced once more with Skyrim's open wilderness, I quit out of a sense of weariness. And yet, I still have that itch to replay the game. The thing is, that itch I feel isn't really an itch to replay the fifth Elder Scrolls game. It's a nostalgic desire to get lost in a world in which I invested a significant portion of my childhood. It's the same periodic urge I get to replay Minecraft or The Witcher 3. However, it's an unreconcilable urge. I can never possibly recreate that feeling of when I first played these video games, the experience of which was heightened by my youthful imagination and abundance of free time. Skyrim does not ignite my curiosity as it once did. I've lost that juvenile capacity to invent my own worlds and to believe in them. In addition, years of dissecting Skyrim to make videos means that the sense of wonder the game could once instill in me is now gone. It's rather ironic that in making videos on Skyrim, I've rendered it more difficult for myself to enjoy the game. Not being able to enjoy Skyrim does not mean I'm unappreciative of the game. Skyrim was groundbreaking when it was released. Perhaps most notably, it popularised the open world format for video games. Skyrim is still a gold standard for this format. Few games since have been able to match the quality of what is considered by many to be Bethesda's crowning achievement, with its intricate world building, handcrafted quests, and impressive scale. I would still say that since 2011, no game has replicated the sheer amount of freedom Skyrim affords the player to tell their own story. Indeed, even Bethesda have struggled to step out of Skyrim's shadow since its release. Fallout 4 was fine, but with its voice protagonist with a preset backstory and mission, it felt far less like an RPG than Skyrim. It also felt less handcrafted, with its abundance of fetch quests and its often bland, bleached terrain. Fallout 76, meanwhile, was merely a money-making machine strapped to the chassis of an RPG. To say that Fallout 4 and 76 are compromised RPGs is not to say that Skyrim's therefore a perfect one. Skyrim got a lot of things right, but gaming has moved on since 2011. For one, since 2011, leaps and bounds have been made towards weaving moving, cinematic stories into the open world model. I am now far more appreciative of story than I was back in 2011, thanks to the likes of The Witcher 3 and Divinity Original Sin 2. Skyrim's underdeveloped characters, an epic but shallow main quest, can't even begin to compare to characters and stories in some newer RPGs. Technical advances have also been made since 2011, and although Skyrim has a vibrant modding community, mods like plastic surgery can only do so much to alleviate aging. Many aspects of The Elder Scrolls V feel extremely dated, but it's the game's combat that has aged the worst. Where once it was accepted that combat in RPGs simply sucked, titles like God of War, Divinity Original Sin 2, and even The Witcher 3 have shown players that creative, challenging combat can be integrated into role-playing games. So how do you go about treating a game that you love but can no longer enjoy? Many look for faults in the game itself. A common narrative in the case of Skyrim has been to suggest that, at launch, players were so enamoured 
by its dragons and shouting, that they fail to perceive Skyrim's deeper flaws, which have only now become more evident. If I attempted to persevere through my frustration and play Skyrim today, I might come to share such a pessimistic view. But I think it's unfair to judge Skyrim by the standards of 2023. I would rather hang up the controller and appreciate what was, for its time, a groundbreaking game from a distance. I may no longer enjoy playing the fifth Elder Scrolls game, but I appreciate it for what it meant to me growing up and for what it did for the gaming industry more broadly. I also believe it's important to recognise my love for Skyrim for what it largely is, nostalgia. In many ways, I feel sorry for Bethesda now. Millions will judge Starfield according to how far it recreates their childhood experience playing Skyrim. Starfield looks like it will be an amazing game, but perhaps we should all be a bit more realistic and accept that no matter how great it is, Starfield is unlikely to do for us what Skyrim did in 2011. We're not children anymore.